In this video we will discuss some general guidelines for sample preparation. You should discuss with your advisor or group mates about details and issues for samples similar to what you will produce. The default probes for all the facilities instruments use 5mm NMR tubes and all samples should be prepared in tubes that are approved for use. The minimum grade of tubes are either Wilmot WG1228 or Norel XR55. These are considered economy grade tubes but they have specifications for straightness and diameter that are safe for our instruments. These tubes are available in the CAS stockroom. Do not use tubes labeled high throughput or disposable. They can potentially damage the NMR probe because they may not be straight or may be oversized. You should inspect your tubes for any scratches or cracks. A broken sample that leaks into the probe can cause extensive damage and months of downtime. Use deuterated solvents. The instrument uses the deuterium for locking and shimming in routine operation. Replacing the protons in the solvent with deuterium also removes them from interfering with observing your dilute samples. We have some tricks for running samples with no deuterium, but this is not a routine experiment. See us if you have samples that cannot be run in deuterated solvents. Samples with too high concentration will have problems running. 5 to 20 mg should be enough to get a good proton spectrum with the default parameters. For samples that require carbon-13 results, higher concentration will be needed. 25 to 100 mg might be necessary to get a good carbon spectrum with the default parameters, which collects 256 scans over 15 minutes. If you have more dilute samples and need carbon results you should see the staff for your options. Make sure your sample height is at least 40 mm. This is about the width of your first three fingers. Shorter samples will be difficult to shim and lead to poor results. If you have very limited amount of sample, we recommend using 3 mm tubes. These will allow smaller volumes, but yield samples with lengths that will shim better than the same volume in a 5 mm tube. See the staff for assistance with obtaining and running with 3 mm tubes. We see these common problems and they all can lead to poor results or the system not being able to run a sample. As just stated, low sample heights should be avoided. Diluting the sample to full height always yields better results than trying to concentrate the sample in a smaller volume. Samples that do not dissolve fully and either gather at the top or bottom will lead to problems. Samples that are cloudy because of undissolved solids will also lead to poor results. Samples like these should be filtered, decanted or centrifuged to yield clear solutions. A pipette filled with glass wool is an effective filter for NMR samples. Syringe filters are also very good, but you could lose a significant volume of sample in the filter itself. Be careful of samples that dissolve but are not mixed well and have a concentration gradient like the one on the right. Mix your samples thoroughly to give homogeneous solutions. Remember the quality of data you obtain will always rely on the quality of your sample. Thanks for watching.